This morning, I'm going to take a little excerpt from this book, John L. Bray's Matthew 24 Fulfilled, and read a slight bit from chapter 8, Heaven and Earth Shall Pass Away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, Matthew 24, 35. It has been generally believed that Jesus here meant that even though these physical heavens and earth will pass away someday, that it is not true about his word, which will never pass away. Whether this physical earth and solar system ever pass away is not the point in this chapter. There is more to this statement of Jesus than meets the eye. Jesus has been talking in apocalyptic language. And heaven and earth passing away could mean here just what he has been talking about. That the heaven and earth of the old Jewish order will pass away. And that his word concerning all this is sure to come to pass. At first glance, it looks as though Jesus was simply saying in this verse, my words will be here when the world passes away. But is the physical world or universe what Jesus had in mind? Were a literal heaven and earth in his thoughts? Remember now what Jesus had been talking about, what he had already said in this chapter would pass away. We have been discussing the passing away of the Jewish nation and the old religious order of things. Go back to Matthew 5.18 and we see where Jesus said, Till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jot and tittle, remember that. What here, what were they, uh, what were they? First, till the heaven and earth pass, and secondly, till all the law be fulfilled. We know the law was fulfilled in Christ, and all prophecies related to Israel were fulfilled by 70 AD. We also realize that because of this old covenant system was becoming a thing of the past, uh, Hebrews 8.13 but how could this be when the heavens and earth had not passed away? For Jesus said, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall not pass in the law. Maybe we can understand this better if we realize he had been talking about the literal, he had not been talking about the literal heaven and earth, but something else. Something else would have to pass away before it could be said that the law was not still in effect. And again, we're talking about the comprehensiveness of the law, not just the ten. In the New Testament especially, the destruction of heaven and earth refers not to the physical universe, but rather it relates to the final passing of the disobedient nation of Israel. All would be fulfilled, every jot and tittle, when heaven and earth passed away. Five, Matthew 5.18 We have to go to the Old Testament to see what heaven and earth means in prophetic language, in Deuteronomy 32, 1, in the Song of Moses, God is talking to Israel when he says, Give ear, O heavens, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. In the Song of Moses, God is depicting the fate of the nation of Israel when he says, for a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her incense, and set fire the foundations of the mountains. And that's in 32, 2, 22. Is God here talking about burning up the earth? No, he's talking about bringing judgment upon Israel. He had already told them, of the type of judgment they could expect. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar and from the ends of the earth as a swift eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue shall not, you shall not understand, Deuteronomy 28, 49. In this song of Moses, God is telling his people that he had delivered them from the oppressor, but that they would become disobedient. He would bring all sorts of trouble upon them. It was a song of deliverance, but also a song of warning. In Revelation 15, 2 through 4, we see the saints singing the song of Moses and also the song of the Lamb after they had gotten their victory over the beast. But apocalyptic and symbolic language is used in the Song of Moses, in describing the judgment of God, when Israel is finally destroyed, 
it is through salvation, it is through heaven and earth, it is though heaven and earth are burned up. In Isaiah 51, 13, God said he had stretched forth, forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. Once again, is God speaking here of the literal heavens and earth? Read on this same page uh, passage to verse 16, quote, And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I might plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and said, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Read that verse again. It could not be talking about the formation of the literal heavens and earth, for that had taken place more than 3,000 years before. So then, what is he talking about? The verse explains itself. He is talking about Zion. He is talking about my temple. In other words, he is talking about Israel. In the verse about the formation of Israel. So in 2435 of Matthew, Jesus must be talking about the passing of Israel when he speaks of heaven and earth passing away. This is what the entire 24th chapter is about, the passing away of old Israel. Now, there will be a new Israel, new heavens and earth, but more about that later. The Bible, uh, the, in Bible figurative language, heavens refers to governments and rulers, and earth refers to the nation or people. With that in mind, we can look at the very first chapter of Isaiah in which God brings begins to give predictions of coming invasions and captivities of his people. And in Isaiah 1-2, he said, Hear, O heavens, and, hear, o, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. To whom is he speaking when he addresses, O heavens and O earth? He is talking about Israel. This shows very clearly that heavens and earth are symbolic language for Israel. In this passage, he went on to say, quote, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Isaiah 1.10 Now God was not speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah, for they had been destroyed many years previously. But the rulers and people of Israel were likened to people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was the heavens and earth also he was speaking. Um, he was speaking. The heavens and earth and all the rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah referred to Israel as a nation. In Isaiah 24, we have a picture of God's promise of judgment on Israel through the Assyrians. But Israel is spoken of as the earth. I read in particular verses uh, 1 and 19 and 20. This is from uh, Isaiah 24. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel and fro uh, shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and shall fall and not rise again. In Matthew twenty uh, thirty four verses four and five, God said, "And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down." And, the, and as the fall, leaf falleth off the vine, and as a falling fig from a fig tree. For my word, my, my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down like Idumea, and upon people of my curse the, to judgment. We know that this is not to be taken literally, that this literal, that the literal heavens would be dissolved and rolled together as a scroll. He was speaking of his sword shall be bathed in heaven and then followed that by explaining that he meant that the sword would, quote, come down from Idumea. The rulers and their people would face judgment upon the Lord. God saved, quote, my sword, and he used armies of, he of heathen people to accomplish his purpose. 
and there is at least the beginning. That was up through chapter uh, chapter eight, verse. I mean, excuse me, uh, page two sixty four. So the heavens and earth is clearly in the New Testament, not speaking of um, not speaking of the literal heavens and earth. And uh, it, it, we have to read the Bible holistically. If we do not, we're not going to have a clue what he's talking about when he comes to these New Testament passages. Bye.